We've all had it drilled into our heads by the establishment, politicians, and media that diversity is a strength, if not our greatest strength. Regardless of unfailingly manipulative repetition, is that really true? Remember what Comrade Napoleon said, two legs bad, four legs good. Conversation is awesome. Hey guys, so I wanna to talk to you today about something that has been repeated to the point of being an undeniable truth, something that no one even questions anymore due in part to the fear of social backlash and ostracization, but also because of how often it's been repeated to them by celebrities, politicians, professors, teachers, because we know those are two different things, um, professors and teachers, and that's the idea that diversity is a strength. The way that they often phrase it is that diversity is and always has been America's greatest strength, which sounds nice, but is it true? Before we establish our definitions, I unfortunately have to clarify for the sake of defending what should be obvious to those not possessed by the spell of sophistry that I am indeed not a racist. I harbor no grievances against any group except the neo-Marxists, of course, and I bring this up only because of my allegiance to the truth. All right, so... When we think of diversity, what do you think would define diversity? Within the context of humans, I would like to see it defined as people that have a wide range of skills, opinions, experiences, and talents, for example, but unfortunately, that's not the definition that the left has in mind when they say that diversity is our strength. Within the context of that talking point, diversity would be defined as something along the lines of a presence of many different races and ethnicities within a society. Does that sound fair to you? It sounds, I mean, that's, that's what they're saying. Um, so for the definition of strength, it's probably more agreed upon between the two sides in the definition of diversity, and I think it would be defined as a quality that a country has that is objectively beneficial to its progression. I think that's pretty fair too. Um, so now that we have those established, we have to ask ourselves this. Does having many different races and ethnicities in a society inherently benefit the progression of that society? Is diversity inherently a strength? I'm going to argue no. Not that it's necessarily a weakness, but I'm going to argue that it's not inherently a strength. The idea of this stems from the fantasy that a black man or a white woman or a Hispanic man or any other physical identity that one can assume will inherently bring something to the table that could otherwise not be brought to the table. This is just not true. In order for this to be true, it must be true that every Hispanic man in the country has lived the same life, had the same experiences, the same religious upbringing, the same everything, and only the Hispanic man has done those things, no one else. Only by that being true could it be argued that in order to include those perspectives, you must include a Hispanic man, because it is only he who has those experiences simply because he is a Hispanic man. This is ridiculous. You should not include the Hispanic man because he's a Hispanic man. You should include the Hispanic man because he has a degree in economics, or because he served in the Gulf War or because his wife passed away and he's a single father. These are all valid reasons to want to include someone in order to achieve a diverse perspective. By arguing that we must include the Hispanic man simply because he's a Hispanic man, you're overlooking and invalidating everything about him that makes him and his perspective unique and focusing only on something that he has in common with about 26 million other people in this country. And to this you might say, well, we have to acknowledge the Hispanic culture and experience of being Hispanic in America. I understand why you might think that. You might think that, you know, you've got to look at people as part of a group instead of as individuals, the postmodernist that you are, but this is still fallacious thinking because there is no one Hispanic experience in this country. Hispanics vary greatly in economic status and political preference and religious denominations and many other things. And I'm using the Hispanic example, but this is the same is true for virtually all races and ethnicities in America. And to this you might say, yeah, John, that's true, but Hispanic people tend to have lower annual income, vote overwhelmingly for Democrats, and be members of the Roman Catholic Church. And by replying with that, you have collapsed your own argument because by pointing out to me those characteristics, you've provided characteristics of Hispanic culture that can and do exist independently of Hispanic culture. In other words, by bringing those up, you have proved that diversity of experience via economic status, diversity of thought via political and religious affiliations is actually more important than diversity simply of skin color or country of origin. So given this diversity and the way that it's defined by the left, it's not inherently a strength because it assumes that the lived experiences of people within a particular pigment are the same and exclusive only to them, and even more disturbing that they only have a valued opinion because of these physical differences instead of the things that define them as individuals. It's also worth pointing out that the rhetoric that they employ to back this claim up is rooted in falsehoods, falsehoods that could be easily dismissed by a high schooler in a U.S. history class if it were still being taught honestly. America is a nation of immigrants. America was founded by immigrants, they'll tell you. This is not true. America was not founded by immigrants. America was founded by settlers. The difference between the two being that the immigrants leave their home country and travel to an already established country to reside in. Settlers leave their home country and then establish the country in which they will reside. Without the settlers, America would still be an unnamed continent inhabited by nomadic tribes. And after the country was established, it was still far from being a diverse country. 
According to the late Harvard professor Samuel Huntington, even as late as 1990, decades after the demographically impactful Immigration and Naturalization Act of 1965, 50% of the American population could be traced back to the white and black Americans in 1790. Nearly all the white population in America from 1600 to 1790 came from a geographic area in the world that's about twice the size of Texas. The vast majority of U.S. presidents were exclusively of British or Dutch descent, similar to the founding fathers and original settlers. The presidents that have had different ethnicities would be the Roosevelts, who were also French in addition to British and Dutch, Hoover, who was also Swiss and German in addition to British and Dutch, Nixon, who was German in addition to Dutch, and a few others composed of other European countries, and then of course Obama, who's part Kenyan. The entire black population came from an area of West Africa that is about the size of Florida. Until the Immigration Act in 1965, America was never less than 99% white Western European and West African black. That isn't diverse, that's biracial. America is America because of these wasps, they're called, which stands for white Anglo-Saxon Protestants. If America hadn't been composed of wasps and been composed of more French or Spanish or Portuguese Catholics, then it wouldn't be America. It'd be Quebec or Mexico or Brazil, as Huntington writes. White and black Americans have a lot of history together through America being biracial, much more history together than any other races or ethnicities share regarding relations. This history was not pretty at all. It was oppressive and brutal and evil, and that was the life of many black Americans for a very long time in this country. So when black Americans say that because of those past injustices, we might need some help getting back onto our feet, and I'm talking, of course, about decades ago, since now it is not obvious to me at all that there are still legal barriers that are oppressing black Americans, we as a country can understand that. But now, black Americans have allowed themselves to be grouped in with all other minorities in some sort of grand unified experience of American oppression, which is just nonsense since no other racial group in America has been oppressed to the degree that black Americans were oppressed. And I say were intentionally because I don't believe that black Americans are still oppressed in this country. But to be a non-black American and then claim that you are or have been oppressed is just ridiculous since when you scream about American racism, it's obvious that you're referencing the days of slavery and Jim Crow, none of which apply to you and even more so doesn't affect you because it's been over for such a long time. So to use that as your reasoning for how you're oppressed is actually insulting to the black Americans of the past that suffered. And before you say, John, you're actually using racial identity to equate to experience just like you said not too earlier, man. It's like the logic actually applies here because Jim Crow laws by design only affected black Americans. Therefore, black Americans would be the only group that would have had that experience. That being said, the language has totally changed. What used to be assimilation has changed to diversity. And in other words, instead of having people come to America to assimilate to our culture, we now have to let them come here and bring their own culture with them because that diversity is a strength. And the research actually suggests that that type of diversity is a weakness. There has to be some sort of unification within a country. Otherwise, what really do you have? A good example of this would, of course, be Canada with its French speaking and English speaking populations, Ireland with its Protestant and Catholic populations, Israel with its Jewish and Palestinian populations, and now countries like Germany, Sweden, and France that are suffering the consequences of importing migrants whose worldview directly contradicts the foundations of Western European culture. Robert Putnam, a Harvard political science professor, released a study in 2007 conducted with a sample of 30,000 Americans that concluded that the greater the ethnic diversity within a population, the less people trusted their neighbors, their local leaders, and even the news. They gave less to charity, voted less, had fewer friends, were more unhappy, and were more likely to describe television as their most important form of entertainment. Um, why ever that's relevant. According to Putnam, it wasn't that the people in the diverse communities trusted people of their own ethnicity more and other races less, it was just that they didn't trust anyone at all. He refused to publish the study for seven years because he didn't like the results. He went through the numbers again. This time he accounted for differences in crime rates, age, income, marital status, home ownership, language, education, every other factor you could think of. No matter how many variables he accounted for, the numbers were always the same, the results were always the same. When he finally released his study, he prefaced it by writing how much he's personally in favor of diversity, which led him to be criticized for straying from the data into advocacy. The study also found that diversity from immigration harmed the social harmony more than America's traditional biracial society of blacks and whites. After comparing the percentage of immigrants with the percentage of blacks, he found that a much more consistent social degradation came from the percentage of immigrants. To summarize, people who lived in communities dominated by the traditional biracial makeup of America had much more trust in their neighbors than people in places like San Francisco or New York with a lot of immigrants. Critics of the study argued that the reasoning for this is just white people are uncomfortable with living close to people that aren't white, but that can't be true since more trust was observed within white and black communities when compared to white and immigrant communities. And also because the author specifically states that it wasn't just that people didn't trust ethnicities other than their own, it was that they didn't trust anybody at all. 
Here's how you should interpret this information because it's easy to look at this and think that we have to purge the country of immigrants and people that aren't white or black, but that isn't the case at all. As I've said in other videos, it has absolutely nothing to do with race, everything to do with culture. The reason that white and black Americans were able to live together with less tension than white Americans and immigrants is because most black Americans and most white Americans are fully assimilated into American culture. Both white and black Americans, as I mentioned, can trace their family heritage back hundreds of years within the United States, if not at least a generation or more. This is in part why a Haitian man would be categorized as an immigrant instead of as a black American, because most people understand, especially black Americans, that there's a large difference between being a black American and being an African American pertaining to culture. The difference between the two groups, of course, being how long that they've actually spent in the United States. So to conclude, is diversity an inherent strength? Well, it depends how you define it. If you define diversity as many people with different skills, opinions, experiences, talents, all coming together, then yes, diversity is absolutely a strength. If you define diversity as simply a presence of many different races and ethnicities in the society, then no, it's not really a strength. So I'd refer you to the previous definition because it's probably a better representation of what you're actually looking for if you want to divorce yourself from your ideology. And if you define diversity as many different cultures living together with little or no unifying qualities, such as language or love of country, then no, that's not a strength. It seems to be much more of a weakness. Thank you for watching.